And now into another kind of book, a very, very um, interesting book that doesn't have any issues like Bonang has. The quote, well, I'm going to read an ex something from it, a sentence that says, you are nobody until somebody kills you, then you become a story that others call history. Those are the chilling words from author Jackie Pamote, who penned a compelling and insightful read simply called Bear. Now, the book reads, in a country where people once struggled for intellectual emancipation, millennials now sell their souls for the next expensive garment or gadget. With the hashtags The Blesser Game and uh, The Breeding of the Underdog, this debut novel has received compliments from the likes of Mama Winnie Madikizela Mandela, Dr. Matthews Poza, and Nzili Gaziwa Africa. Jackie, <laughs> this is a book. Come on, for a, a hectic, hectic book. Welcome to Trends. Congratulations on a gripping book that I think many people, young, old parents especially, need to read. Tell us about the process and the becoming of Bear. Thank you so much for the invite. Pleasure with you. Um, I started writing Bear about two and a half years ago and I had to do extensive research just to get the contents right yeah. and as factual and as truthful and as natural as I could write it because right. most of the time you find that when you're writing something mm. you sort of piggyback from some experience that you must probably had, right. you know, right. because it is a, a book that speaks about true life experiences yeah. and experiences that young people face. And it took me about two and a half years to research and a year to write. Yeah. And the production, obviously, the, the editing, the proofreading, mm -hmm. fact research, double checking, it takes about six to eight months. Wow. So it's, it's, a, it's a long journey. But a brilliant read. I mean, Dr. Matthews Posa said, the future of our literature is in this book. So yeah. big, big compliment to you. Yeah. Just, this is your second book. It is. It's my second book yeah. because yeah. the first one was titled Shattered Innocence. Yeah. And that was received very well, actually. Yeah. And I felt the need to now move on and direct certain social ills. Yeah. And yeah, the quote from Dr. Matthews is... is is quite humbling yeah. because you know he's a renowned politician, he's a lawyer, he's an advocate, and a lot of people take light of his, his mind yeah. because he's, he's very sharp, you know. So for him to even take my time to go through to my manuscript, yeah. and, you know, that's me, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I like a quote here that uh, says, "Humans adapt to things that seem to warm their hearts." Money is one of those. True. What's going on with our young girls, with the millennials, with the born freeze? Because this is becoming, uh, not even becoming, it is. It is. It's a big thing. And, you know, young girls are getting killed. Young girls are suffering at the expense of being the popular girls on social media pages and being out and about everywhere mingling with apparent celebrities. Yeah, I mean, I take it back to... Our parents, yeah, you know, uh, our parents struggled a different kind of war, yeah, you know, um, and the millennials now, the generation after 1994, really struggle with identity issues, which lead them to want so many things that they have not worked for. But I want to go back to this entitlement. I want to go back to that because you mentioned mm -hmm. our parents. So the parents of the millennials what's going on with them and how come they, there seems to be a disconnect in terms of understanding the current, you know, lifestyle and also, you know, instilling those values because it has to start at home. Because uh, our parents are not exposed to what we're exposed to now. They don't know we, how we live in Johannesburg or any metropolitan city. Mm -hmm. They don't know the truth mm -hmm. of the pressures of the city. Yeah. And to address things becomes very difficult for them because they don't know what to address. They don't know how to address it. Right. They don't even know how social media works. <laughs> so True. if you were to look at how our parents lived and how young people live now, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. So you can't address issues that you both are not on par with or you're not in understanding with. Yeah. So it becomes difficult to say to a young 16, 19, 20 year old, mm -hmm. don't do this because of this, because yeah. you would not say yeah. that you have not lived that. Yeah. So which makes it difficult to advise. And then you look at, are young people willing to listen as well? That's a big thing. Are we willing because to listen? They are the generation right. that knows everything. Exactly. Okay. You know? So it, it, that becomes an issue mm -hmm. because they want to experiment. They want to have their own ex experiences. Yeah. And unfortunately, we're looking at young people who think freedom is really free, and it's not. It comes with a, it comes with a huge responsibility. responsibility. You know, it comes yeah. with a responsibility yeah. that applies other people's second applies their minds, their bodies, their soul, mm. even go to the extent of 
sacrificing their education. Right. You know, you would see a young person taking their tuition money to go buy a Louis Vuitton bag, to buy but, an iPhone, yeah, to, to, yeah. to do a weave, or whatever the case may be, yeah. or the next sneaker, whatever the case right. may be. And you ask yourself, where did we lose value in ourselves and in the things that we come to metropolitan cities to do? Yeah. You know, you, you leave Mutata, you leave Lesotho or Botswana, you come to South Africa for an education. Yeah. But where does the shift happen when it comes to you leaving your dreams yeah. and letting life take advantage of the dream that you came here for? Yeah. Of, of course, people are exposed to different things. We will not expect the person who's in um, rural Guagua to behave differently towards a person who's yeah. in Togo. But I suppose then the difficulty then becomes mm. so many are living almost double lives because True. they go back home during the holidays True. and they are the girl that Uma and Dada know and you know what I mean. But Jackie, um, Nina Simone, amazing, yeah. amazing woman. Uh, oh. Her bio thing is actually coming out this yeah. month as yeah. well. Or it is out. And her quote, you've got to learn to leave the table when love's no longer being served. Oh, that is so true. How, what do we do? How do we tell this to young girls especially? Because this is not going to change. It's not. It might get potentially worse, mm -hmm. but many families are losing their kids. So just to wrap, how do we teach them to leave the table when love's no longer being served? It's always communication, yeah. telling the honest truth about situations. And it's about personal conversations that you have with yourself mm -hmm. and what you can stand for and what you will not stand for, yeah. you know, personal values. If you don't have that, anybody can take you for a ride, whether it's in a, the work environment, whether it's in a relationship, or with social, mm -hmm. social environments, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's about what you really, really want to be. And if you can't, if you can't live towards yourself yeah. and project that, yeah. people take you for a ride easily. They see the loopholes, they see the weaknesses, so they'll tap into that. So strength. It's strength. Women's month. We all need to instill strength. an indomitable yeah. sense of strength in our young sure. girls. Yeah. Jackie, thank you so very much. Your book is absolutely amazing. Please, I urge South Africans to go and get this book and also make it a birthday gift. A gift for, you know what I mean? Let cu the culture of reading be instilled in our youth as well. Mama Winnie Madiki Sela Mandela said it's a phenomenal story and I couldn't agree more. We're going to an ad break. Trends come to us back after this.